What's up everybody? It is Doug with an episode of Trigger King Tech. We have not done any of these videos on this channel in a very long time and people still comment on them and they wonder, you know, what's up with guys? What are they running? So I wanted to talk about retro monster trucks today. I'm going to go through these kind of as we go through the winter here and do some different kind of updates to these videos that we've done over the years. But I'm going to start with retro. I'm going to talk about what guys are kind of doing uh, with a retro monster truck, what goes into kind of an average one as far as RC goes. But then I want to change it, actually, because as I've been talking about this, thinking about what I was going to say, it's kind of the question to you all out there and the question in general in the hobby, what is a retro RC monster truck exactly? Because a lot of people have opinions on it and a lot of people have different answers on it. Now I'll start out here talking about um, my particular clod buster here, just to show an example of a of a Tamiya claw that's set up for kind of a standard retro racing. You know, it, it, again, these are different nationally with different clubs, but this is what we run, and you're going to find something similar to this in most clubs, uh, at least that I know of. So this is a clod buster, and uh, it's, it's a modified clod, but they pretty much all are at this point. And this chassis here, this is a, a custom chassis my friend Travis Sutton did, Sutton Motorsports. But even though the chassis are different, we'll talk about some of them here in a minute, most of the, the construction is sort of the same as far as the layout goes. So you have uh, a central chassis here, of course. Normally, this one is like a frame style, but most of them are boxed, where you actually have a box that you can lay in some of the electronics on it. Um, that's, a, that's a very popular setup. But you've got uh, the axles on it, right? And a clod is motor on axle. Apologies for this chassis being kind of dirty here. I haven't had a time, uh, the, the chance to really clean it up since dirt racing season. But you have the clod axles here. You have the motor on axle setup. Kind of a typical clod suspension in the way it's set up. This one uses oil shocks here, but uh, you know friction. Some guys used to friction shocks too. But the steering is the main thing that's that's different outside of the chassis from a standard clod. This one you have the steering on the axle, almost in, in both ends of it. This one here is a typical kind of setup. This is a Sutton Motorsports one, but there are various folks who offer different ones out there. J Concepts actually orders a behind the axle kit. You can also lock out the rear with the J Concepts kit or various other ones here. But the actual function of the truck and the kind of layout is pretty much the same whether you're talking this type or the very popular J Concepts regulator, which of course, that's probably the most popular thing guys are racing with right now when they're building clods because it's a very race-oriented setup. It gets that weight low, um, but it does retain the similar function of the uh, stock clod suspension, it just lowers the center of gravity some, but the layout and everything like that, it is the same. Now, most retro monster trucks, you're also going to find that brush motors are the name of the game. Uh, most are 27 turn. I know that some use a higher turn motor depending on the club. There's some different battery rules out there. We run 27 turn motors with um, two cell LiPo. I think that's a good jumping off point to talk about kind of the history of the class. So the retro monster truck class, at least as far as I know, um, it started to get popular really in like the mid to late 2000s. I know I saw uh, retro monster trucks for the first time online on a message board. Uh, the NRCTPA had run them at an event where guys had, to me, a clod busters done up like, uh, you know, like replica old school monster trucks. And this was really cool because during this time period, that's when old school wasn't known so much as old school. It was, but I guess it wasn't popular. As now, like everybody, it, it's good to talk about old school monster trucks. It's a lot of fun. Back then, it was a little trickier, right? YouTube still hadn't proliferated uh, everything like it had. So now you can find all these old, cool old school clips. But um, around that time period, it was still kind of dicey to find some of the old school stuff. And it was very cool seeing the NRCTPA guys do that at an event. And once Trigger King got going, which was we started racing monster trucks in 2014, we knew right away we wanted to do something like that. So um, we actually got our name of Outlaw Retro because a lot of guys at the time when they were racing these retro monster trucks, um, because solid axle monster truck racing nationally back then was a little trickier because, again, there, the, the internet was really, it was just like message boards. It wasn't like the Facebook groups or the big thing, you know, YouTube being popular. So you would just see guys trading pictures and kind of talking who was doing what you didn't really know. So with Trigger King, when we started doing it, guys recommended that we go with a higher turn than 27 turn motor uh, or use 27 turn on one cell. Uh, I forget exactly the gist, but the idea was uh, guys were running to run them slower. And we did not want to do that. We wanted them on two cell and we wanted them on 27 turn because we thought that was kind of, well, it was easy setup wise, right? It was easy to find equipment like that because that was kind of the standard loadout for RC stuff. And it, we, we felt like it kept them at a speed that was like the TNT era, which is what we kind of like to replicate as far as the retro monster truck, uh, you know, the class that we do. So because we were running them a little faster than other clubs at the time, 
uh, we started calling them Outlaw Retro. And that name is stuck, even though it kind of doesn't make total sense anymore, but we've just always done it, so Outlaw Retro is what it is. So if you're ever wondering where the Outlaw moniker on our class came from, that is where it came from. Now, over the years, things have changed drastically. You know, retro monster trucks are very popular. Why? Because guys love the old school style monster trucks. I grew up in that era. Some of my most fond memories, and heck, some of my earliest childhood memories are at the St. Louis Arena and watching the lead trucks do battle. It was so much fun back then. I still think it's a blast to watch like the TNT style racing. I still think that's some of the best racing monster trucks, the full size stuff competition has ever put on. And it's fun seeing that drama, the old school races. So TNT era is what our outlaw retro class has tried to replicate. Um, but nationally, you know, the retro monster trucks as they're popular, different people have different definitions of what that is. And it's really interesting. So what is a retro monster truck? You know, what does it mean anymore? I know what it means in our club or what we try to make it mean, but even with our club, there's, a, you know, internally, there's always kind of a friction around it. And that's where it's tricky, uh, I think, to race retro monster trucks. It's kind of funny that the actual, the, the modern style trucks, you know, our, our sport mod class, we try and do uh, speed-wise, like the Penda era, we try and replicate that, where pro mod is more like the modern era. We, we kind of try and do that. Um, there's really not been much issue with those ever. Those have been fun. Um, there's really never been any arguments on it, but man, the retro trucks, uh, there's just so many opinions on what that is and what it's not in between clubs, in between just hobbyists, in between the builder, you know, who just wants to build one of these things. And it's hard to talk retro monster truck without talking about the Tamiya Cloudbuster, of course. That's where we started this video, right? Our club, really, that's what it is, is, is Cloudbusters racing. And I think most nationally, that's what it is. There's not an actual mainstream solution as far as like a leaf sprung truck, right? Uh, if Tamiya released the Juggernaut, which, boy, they really should re-release that. If, if they would do something like that, I think it would sell like gangbusters, you know, a leaf sprung shaft drive truck. Um, but there's really not one available, at least commercially, that you can go into a hobby shop and order. And so the Cloudbuster is really married to retro trucks for multiple reasons. It's available, like I just said. You can go to your hobby shop and order one. Heck, there's always new special editions of the Cloud coming out. Um, but... It's also a retro RC. The Cloud was released in the late 80s and really hasn't changed much, uh, actually to its detriment, in my opinion. Um, you don't, you know, you don't see people racing stock Cloud, uh, box stock Clouds, because the steering is such junk, and uh, the steering that comes out of one is junk. And really, once you start modifying the steering, well, then you start modifying this, you start modifying that. If to me it were just to re-release the Cloud with better steering, like axle steering, I think that would really simplify a lot of things. But that's a whole separate digression. Uh, anyways, to get back on the retro topic here, yeah, so the Cloudbuster, a lot of people, we, you know, myself, we included, we associate that uh, with not just the golden age of monster trucks, but like the golden age of RC monster trucks are kind of one and the same. Well, the problem is that to me, a Cloudbuster really is nothing like a full-scale truck. It looks like one if you take a glance at it. It has the vibe and it kind of handles like one as long as you fix the steering, but it's motor on axle. It's not shaft drive, but now with the scale boom that's going on now, uh, it does seem odd to not have a super scale monster truck that not only behaves like it did, but to also, you know, be constructed similarly to how it is. And maybe some of you guys watching out there who are just, you know, non-monster truck people and you're just wondering what's, what is it about these retro trucks? You might wonder why are these guys running Cloudbusters? Those things look nothing like a scale appearing 4x4 monster truck, uh, you know, as far as the drivetrain goes. What gives? Well, that's why. They're just available and a lot of us grew up with them and it's just an ingrained part of the hobby. And I think that's where it's become really difficult now to try and regulate this class going forward. Because frankly, uh, that's where the question part comes. Um, I know, you know, for me and Trigger King, we tried to kind of govern it as it's a class that was frozen in time, right? We want to replicate a certain era of monster trucks. Well, how do you do that when the actual technology now is pushing it? I mean, you look at a J Concepts regulator, right? That's a lot different, at least in as far as the engineering behind it, than just like an old sassy chassis, right? Or definitely different than a, a stock to me, a Cloudbuster. So it's difficult. You're trying to replicate an era, but the technology currently is pushing it. And then you have the whole, you know, shaft drive versus um, to me, a Cloudbuster debate. And normally Leaf Springs is involved in that and, and what's not. So it's very dicey. So, you know, I would love to know, you know, what do you guys think out there? What If you're watching this, what is a retro monster truck to you? Is it a Tamiya Cloudbuster that's box stock? Is it a box frame truck with a transfer case, leaf springs, the whole nine that has an old school body on it? Is it just an RC monster truck that has an old school body on it, you know, from like early 1990? 
or does a retro monster truck have to be a replica for you? I'd be really curious on what you think because there's just so many different opinions on it out there. I don't know that there is a right one. All right, guys, hey, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you find this video interesting at the very least. And uh, let me know below, what do you think a retro RC monster truck is? Uh, what does that mean to you? So thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you soon.